So previously I've looked at app images and I've looked at snaps and today we're going to look at the final three of the major Linux universal packaging systems. So today we're going to be looking at flat packs. Now they are developed by freedesktop.org and a lot of people tend to get caught up in the controversy surrounding Canonical and snaps and and how it's trying to be pushed in Ubuntu and how Mint is like basically removed support for them. But this tends to blind people from the actual software and tends to make people ignore how useful snaps actually can be. Now, when you look at something like flat packs, they aren't a purely community project, unlike they claim to be on their website. Freedesktop.org is funded by Red Hat and Endless and a bunch of other organizations as well. So it's not like this is just, you know, some random people on GitHub doing stuff. This is still an industry funded project, but it seems much more community oriented, especially when you start, you know, seeing how friendly people are towards flat packs. Now, this isn't to say that flat packs are bad or that snaps are great or anything like that, but it is something that you do need to keep in mind. This is not a community project by any means, even though it might seem like it sometimes. So when I do need to make comparisons, I will be comparing flat packs to snaps just because it's a much easier comparison to actually make than comparing them to say app images. Now this is because they both distribute with a package manager, they both distribute through a store, and they both generally, at least from the outside, work in a fairly similar way. Now one of the big differences is when it comes to actually setting up flat packs. Now, in the case of something like Arch Linux, it doesn't have support for either of them out of the box. And this is the case with a lot of distros. Really, it's only the Red Hat distros that have support for flat packs out of the box and the canonical distros and the obviously ones based on Ubuntu that have support for snaps out of the box. But when you actually want to set them up on something like Arch or when you want to set it up on, I don't know, Void or something like that, when it comes to actually getting access to the tools, getting access to the Flatpak tools is almost always easier. So in the case of Arch Linux, Flatpak is available in the standard repos, but if you want to go and actually get SnapD, that is available in the AUR. And this is sort of a common trend for a lot of distros. Most of the time, Flatpak will be available in the standard repos, and then you have to go through some other method, whether that's manual installation or some third-party repos to actually get access to the Snap tools. But even so, there are a lot more applications available as a Snap, and this is just because Ubuntu is sort of the de facto standard when you have no idea what Linux is, so obviously Ubuntu is going to have more of these applications. But this isn't to say that there isn't anything available as a Flatpak. Most of the things that you're going to want as a Flatpak are going to be available, so things like LibreOffice, Spotify, Steam, Zoom, things like this. And having less applications isn't really that big of a deal because honestly, most software out there is kind of garbage. And that is very true in the case of Snap. If you go look through the Snap Store, there is going to be a lot of bad applications there that just happen to get onto the Snap Store. So I briefly mentioned tooling before. So if you want to go and install a Flatpak, uninstall it, update, or even run it even, it has to be done through the Flatpak application. You can't just go and say, add it to your path variable and then run it like any other sort of application. And even if you go and download the installer file, you still need an internet connection to actually install the application because it might need to go and download extra runtimes to use. However, there are methods to sideload applications if you do need to do an offline installation with, say, a air gap computer or something like that. Updates can be done through this method as well, but typically you will have an internet connection, so it's not really that much of a worry. And speaking of doing updates, when it comes to doing updates, they won't be done automatically, so it's going to work like your regular sort of package manager. When you want to do an update, you'll say, hey go and update things, and then it will download the update. Now, there are some third-party applications that work alongside Flatpak that do automatically download updates. However, that isn't part of the actual Flatpak application. So obviously you need a root password to go and install the Flatpak tools, but I've noticed that you don't actually need a root password to install a Flatpak. Now, I've looked online, apparently this is due to the fact that my user is in the sudo group, but my user is not in the sudo group. So I'm guessing maybe that's changed or it might just be a weird arch peculiarity. At least on my system, I can install flat packs globally without needing to put in my root password. Now moving on to security for just a bit, if something is going to be a flat pack, it is going to be sandboxed. There isn't any choice about it. There is only a sandboxed mode and that is all you get for a flat pack. So if security is important to you, then maybe using flat packs is going to be a better approach than say using a snap where you can have things like say classic sandboxing, which is effectively no sandboxing or very minimal sandboxing. Now, 
In the case of a flat pack, you can obviously poke holes in the sandboxing because otherwise you wouldn't be able to do things like, say, Bluetooth support or audio support or things like this. But ultimately, the application is going to be sandboxed and only those things are going to be allowed in. Now, because of this sandboxing, like with snaps, it is really annoying to get your theming working. The way you do it with a flat pack is typically you just go and install the theme you want to use as a flat pack and it just works like that. I don't know of a way that you can actually use your regular system themes inside of a flat pack. If someone knows how to do that, feel free to leave it down below in the comments, but I couldn't find any way to actually do that. So with a flat pack, it makes use of a system called bubble wrap to do its sandboxing, but I'm no security expert, so I cannot tell you what the merits of using this over things like Fire Jail or App Armor actually are. I know there's obviously a reason why they chose to use Bubble Wrap over those other options, so I'm going to assume they probably chose it for a good reason. When it comes to installing applications, you obviously have the Flathub store, which is the main place to actually distribute flat packs from. But you're not actually locked into this single store. You can go and switch to any of the other stores that exist as well. Obviously, they're not going to have all the same applications, and some of them are going to be basically useless. Some of them might even be full of malware. But you do have the option to choose a different store if you do want to choose that store. So this gives users and developers much more freedom to distribute and also to find applications. And unlike a certain other packaging system, when you install a flat pack, it doesn't spam your system with loopback devices making things like LSBLK basically unusable, which is always a nice plus. So when you want to uninstall a flat pack, you can basically uninstall it without it leaving a really annoying trail of destruction. If you look online, one of the very frequent questions you'll see is what's better for performance, a flat pack or a snap? Now, I've used both of them. I don't really notice any performance issues with either of them. Obviously, they're both going to be slower than natively installed applications, but there's nothing really that bad about the performance. However, if you're asking if flat packs are better, I can't really answer that question. Now, it's not because I didn't do my research. It's because no one seems to have a proper answer because it seems to be basically down to the application, down to the computer, down to the version of the application, down to the phase of the moon and various other sort of variables because even for the same application on the exact same version, you will have some people saying the snap is better and some people saying the flat pack is better. And they're both right. That's the problem. Because this is a universal packaging system, it isn't going to be that optimized for the computer it's actually running on. So it's very possible that with the same application, it can show completely different results based on the computer it's installed on. So my suggestion for you is let's say you want to use Spotify. Go and download the Snap, go and download the flat pack, and see which one actually performs better. Because it's going to be very much up to what you're running. Now, I have heard some people say that just having SnapD running in the background has really slowed down their system. I haven't noticed that problem myself back when I was using it on my laptop, but it is something you might want to consider. So let's say that now you're interested in how flat packs work and you want to go and try them out. So if you want to go and install a flat pack, what you're going to want to do is come over to the flat pack website and go to the get setup section. And this section has a breakdown of most of the really popular distros and how to actually get a flat pack set up on that distro. So in my case, we're going to go to Arch Linux and all we have to do here is run sudo pacman s flat pack. So if we go over to my terminal, run that sudo pacman dash s flat pack and I've already got it installed and then the next thing it says to do is restart your system so if you go and restart your system it'll just work from now on and then we can do things like say flat pack search and then let's say we search for something like steam and as we can see there's an application here called steam this is the application id so when you want to go and install a flat pack you can use the name or the id if you want to make sure you're installing the correct one go and use the id because this id is going to be unique so let's do flat pack install and then steam and it's going to search for a match in this case it's going to try to install steam if we go and press yes, it'll go and install that. I'm going to do no for now. And then if you want to uninstall it, it's basically the exact same process. But instead of doing install, you do uninstall instead. And then whatever the name of the application is going to be. 
Now, when you go and download a flat pack, like with a snap, it doesn't actually contain every single one of the dependencies the application actually needs. Sometimes it will have to go and download extra dependencies from the store. So if you want to go and get rid of those unused dependencies, basically you just do flat pack uninstall dash dash unused, and then any of the dependencies which are not being used right now will be gotten rid of. So if we run that, as we can see, there was nothing to uninstall. The other way that we can install a flat pack is by actually going and downloading the installer. So going over to the Flathub store, let's say we want to download Spotify. So if we go to the install button right here, what it's going to do is basically download a flat pack ref file, which doesn't actually contain any of the files needed to actually install the application. What it does contain though, is basically a link to where it's located in the remote. So if we just run flat pack install, and then pass in that file right here, it's going to try to use that file to install a flat pack. Now do keep in mind that flat packs are still very much a work in progress like any of the other universal packaging systems, but we are starting to see some really, really promising results. And maybe one day we'll start seeing more of this in the Linux desktop. Now I know there's going to be some people who desperately, desperately hold on to their traditional package managers. And I'm one of those people, but maybe one day in some of the more user friendly distros, it's going to be entirely flat packs or entirely snaps. I don't know what the future is going to hold. Now it's fair to say that snaps and flat packs work in a fairly similar way with flat packs being a bit more open by not relying on a proprietary store. So if you didn't know, the snap store actually is proprietary, at least in some parts of the application. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say today. Now there will be a final follow-up video where I actually do compare all three of these ways of doing universal packaging. And I think that will be a lot of fun because People seem to put app images in this bubble with the other two, but they are actually very, very different. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say today. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Corbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan Monsada, Chico Bento, Joseph Peter D. Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek Mikkel, Nate Dog, Nephite, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there's links down below to my Patreon, LibPay. Other things, subscribe, star that one. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library and Odyssey if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.